Everybody, welcome to today's webinar. And um, I am Tyann Marston Cameron with Touch Day, the community ambassador. And today I have a wonderful panel that we're going to talk about upsells. Uh, first is Allison Curran with Bath Apartment Breaks. Hello. Then Alistair Handyside with Higher Wiscombe Cottages. That's where uh, Alistair goes. Hello. That's it. Not me. I'm not Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we have Nancy McAleer with Anna Maria Island Home Rental and Flarbo. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. All right. And everybody in the crowd, I would love if you would ask us any questions. Just put, us, put it into the chat. And depending upon how the webinar goes today, we may get to all of them, just a few of them. But if you have any specific questions or a problem that we can brainstorm and solve for you, uh, just let us know. So I am going to now introduce our um, head moderator, Andy McNulty with Touch Day Digital Guidebooks and hand it over to you, Andy. I like head moderator. That's a new one. Um, Hello everyone, I am Andy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the CEO of Touch Day. That's, there you go, that's Touch Day. Um, and we're gonna talk not about Touch Day, but we're going to talk about upselling for the next hour or so and definitely reinforce what Tyan said. If you've got a question or a particular challenge that you're facing in upselling, or you hear something that someone says and you've got a question, ask it because those questions that come in are really great for the discussion, but best of all, hopefully you get an answer um, to get something out of it. We won't make you turn your screen on and record or anything like that. So just type your question in the chat box. It makes it really, really helpful for us to direct the conversation and more importantly, keep us on track if you think we're disappearing off track. So with that said, um, upselling. I will preface this with um, <laughs> I'm somewhat skeptical about the degree to which um, upselling is something that you can do successfully. And I say that as first and foremost a guest who hates being upsold to. Um, so we'd love to hear how you can do that subtly. But secondly, I just think it's really, really hard to do effectively, given that it's such, um, it, it, it's hard running these kind of businesses without introducing upselling. So I come in it with that hat on. That's not to say that I don't think it's possible. It's just kind of like a little sort of challenge. Um, so before we get in, there is a poll question that Tyan's just thrown up. Um, do you offer upsells? Let's just get a sense of yes, you do or no, you don't currently. Do you want to reveal the results or do we want to go oh, into the question? They're still You're... coming in. Go okay, ahead. Let's, let's go into the question. So first up, Nancy, let's start with you because I know that you are an upselling machine <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in your own crafty and, and smart way. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the sorts of things that you're upselling or doing to earn extra money on top of your regular nightly income? Yeah, so when I took a look at um, what was happening in my hosting cycle, um, when my guests would be coming in, I've got about three rentals, um, their houses on, in Florida, and I was hearing the same questions over and over and over again. Can you recommend the airport shuttle? Can you recommend, you know, where do I buy groceries? Can you recommend... Um, is there a, a, you know, a, a car rental agency close by? Is there, you know, I want to rent a golf cart. Like our island is really focused on, you know, golf carts and electric uh, modes of transportation. So the same questions I was hearing over and over and over again when I was hosting, and it was driving me nuts because I knew that that was leakage. I knew I could get my hands on some kind of profit there. In addition to really giving the host like a, a carefree experience, because I think it, it was a, a study that I read out of um, Rotterdam in the Netherlands that it takes a host, a traveler, excuse me, sometimes up to like 16 hours to plan and choose a vacation rental. Can you imagine? Like that's 16 hours just to plan and choose the vacation rental. And then you have to go on with, you know, the whole planning of the rest of your trip after you're there. 
So that's when I was, you know, really focused on, okay, there's a real opportunity here that I can differentiate myself from everybody else and create like such a seamless guest experience that um, they'll, my guests will want to come back to me again and again. So my biggest sellers, I want to say are like kayaks, kayak rentals, a lot of sports rentals, paddle boards. They ask me about boat rentals a lot, um, wheelchair, beach chairs. Like those are huge for me because nobody else pretty much provides them on the island. And then um, obviously grocery concierge stocking right now with uh, the pandemic, not a lot of people want to go to stores right now. And, you know, having that uh, carefree experience of walking into a rental as soon as you arrive, especially if it's a late at night and you got little kids and there's juice in the fridge or there's water in the fridge, you know, th there's a snack or breakfast in the morning. Like that's a great experience. So you know, that's for me that the main things I can come up with on the top of my head that where I started uh, offering things to my guests. Yeah. Uh, how? You know, I'm sure there are people listening going, oh, <laughs> that sounds really appealing. How do I do it without? Yeah. I mean, maybe you want to give away some trade secrets. I don't know. But uh... well, this whole thing happened when, you know, nobody else was doing it. So I really had to introduce to a lot of my local vendors on the island of actually um, investing in a booking platform for themselves. Um, a lot of the times it was like a handshake deal where I would say, okay, I'm going to continue to, to drive people to you in the very beginning. And then it was uh, reciprocal of where they would, you know, the sports rental agency would give me and my family, you know, free golf cart rentals anytime I would come down. So it would be like, you know, kind of like a trade-off kind of deal. And then when I was explaining to a lot of the local vendors, like, look, you need, you need to get book online on your website. <laughs> and if you use these platforms like ResD or like Peak, or there's so many other fair harbors, another one, then I can work with you with my agent fee, what's called an agent fee. And then they can also manage all of their bookings seamlessly on like a, a software. So many of them had no clue about it. So it was a lot of education in the beginning. Mind you, this was a long time ago. This was like almost a decade ago that I started doing this. And now it's so much easier because if you go onto these platforms, I want to say Commission Junction as well, too, for ticket sales to theme parks. Um, if you go onto these websites and then you put in your registration of your account, and then you can apply to these um, vendors that are offering services in your area, and then they will either approve you to get a certain commission percentage. And then it's so easy after that, then I would just put it in on my website uh, with the affiliate link. And then that's all I have to worry about. The rest of it's all attached to my bank account. And it's pretty much seamless after that. I just have to focus on guest nurture. Fantastic. So from what I'm hearing, that how question I asked is relatively simple for you to do now. So long as the services that you are directing guests to are registered on one of those affiliate platforms. So the kayak company, if they're not, you would have a conversation and say, look, I can, I can send you my guests, but you need to be on this platform first before I'll do it. Cause you right. hold, you hold some of the power here. You hold the, the demand. It's your guests. Yeah. And I'm creating great relationships with the local vendors. Like that's, that's fantastic because they also will feed me back with business too, you know, for my vacation rentals. And um, like I said, like budget is another one, a car rental. You can get an affiliate link to that super easily. Like it's, it's very, very easy to do. And attaching an affiliate link to like a button that's on your website is very simple. Like it's, it's, I can't even, like if I can do it, anybody could do it for sure. I, I would say, Nancy, it's even easier to put a hyperlink into a touch day guidebook that you send your guests pre-arrival. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to get into that next because like, oh. I, I think that a guidebook is essential in the upselling process for sure. Mm. But anyway, mm. I'll let everybody. Okay. No, that, that, was, that, was, that was great. That was, that was a really good start. Thank you. And then that, and that's your experience in the States. I, I think, Alison, you probably have a, a different take on this from the UK and you may be doing different things. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I can look at this from two points of view. Firstly, from my own two properties, 
and also from um, our local uh, self caterers association, um, where we have a, a slightly different scheme. But I, I, I'm intrigued to hear about these systems, affiliate links, and ResD, and and these. Are, I've not come across that in the UK. I, I may be missing it, but I don't think so. But it does sound as if it makes life a bit easier. Um, so it, my in my properties, the kind of upselling I, I am, I, I mean, I think it, Nancy's is absolutely right. You have to look at your market and your area and you have to understand what it is that your customers want and what will be appealing to them. So, for example, take a really basic example. If your market is retired people, it's no, there's no point trying to sell them babysitting because they're just not interested in that. Um, so uh, my properties are both in city centre in Bath. Um, and my guests tend to be on relatively short stays. So they're coming for city breaks. They're not coming to go kayaking or sit on the beach, this sort of thing. It's a completely different environment. Um, but what we do have here is the, is the spa, the Thermai Bath Spa, which is famous and very many people come to visit it. So one of the ways of upselling there is that we have a, an arrangement with the Thermai Spa so that we can sell we can sell spa entry tickets and, and we get a small commission for doing that. So that's the sort of one thing that we uh, that I can sell on and that like I make a small profit. Um, but I think there's another way of looking at our selling. It's not only to make a profit on the individual sale of the extra itself, but it's also to improve the visitor experience. So you're offering a service to the guests, which although you may not intrinsic make any money out of that particular sale or not much, you're improving the marketability of your property and thereby increasing, potentially increasing your bookings and in making life easier for your guests. You're increasing your level of, of repeat bookings. So um, I, I do, you know, do things like, for example, making guest lives easier, absolutely they arrive late at night, the last thing they want to be doing is, is hunting around looking for a meal. Um, we do, one thing we do is we, we provide, um, they call fine dining ready meal made by a local producer and Yes, order them in advance and we have them waiting in the apartment for them. So that's all there. So that's that kind of thing. But I think it's very much about working out what it is your market wants and what you can reasonably provide as well. It's again, it's no good having a fantastic extra that you can sell. It takes you two days to put the whole thing together and you make £10 out of it. So it, it has to be proportionate. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. Um, spinning the wheels unnecessarily for a little bit of extra is just not worth it but I'm interested with the bath spa and the 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 the, the meal package delivery how do you how does how do those service providers attach you to that transaction so they know it's you and give you something back um well not as kind of smooth as it could um, uh, the spa tickets i have to buy the tickets in advance and i buy them at a discount um and the meal meal provider that you know they're a small business they don't have much margin so they don't give me a discount but i just make a small charge for collection and delivery if you like and and that one i rather view it as kind of improving the guest experience i don't really expect to make any money out of that but it people like it and it's convenient and gets me a happy guess so yeah well uh, on that note that's a really good lead in to to Alistair because I know Alistair you have um a, a similar take to the latter part of what Alison had mentioned there why don't you tell us a little bit about your approach to this yeah I'm going to try and answer the question in two ways one is the reality on the ground here uh in autumn 2021 and then you know what I would really like to be able to do in the future. Um, you know, we have uh, Touch Day, we have Digital Guidebook, uh, uh, and you know the main thing that we have really used that for the summer is is the biggest question we've had to answer is where can you find somewhere to eat? You know, the the, the biggest problem has been getting people into restaurants. We've got shortages of staff. We've got uh, restaurants only open three nights rather than seven nights. Uh, limited table spacing. So we we've used uh, touch day in, in a way that we probably never envisaged uh, a, a year ago in having the most comprehensive list of 
local places to eat. Now, they may not all make it next spring if any kind of normality comes, but you know, we use that as a job to make sure we could answer the guest number one question, which is where can we go out? So, you know, upselling is a funny kind of thing. That was that was making sure that we gave the guests, and I've heard this come from Nancy and Alison previously, you know, our job when we wake up in the morning is to give, to give the guests the best possible experience we can. That's my job description. That's Alison's job description. That's Nancy's job description. You give the guests the best possible experience, they'll be happy, they'll recommend you, they'll pay your price, they'll come back, you know, all those good things. And they don't think you've upsold them if you've told them all the secret places that you can go paddleboarding or the great restaurant uh, whatever but you are upselling because they're having a better holiday than their friends had when they go back and make a comparison mm. so that's an upsell make absolutely mistake mistake out there that is the best quality upsell and we'll come to monetizing it in a second but but making sure that they have the best possible holiday means that you know you're their friend forever and that's that's really important if your pricing's right you know you're you're probably about on the ticket as well so you know, from, from my, my perspective here, I would dearly love to be able to um, uh, get uh, some kind of, I think, I think tickle is a funny English term that gets used, which might amuse Nancy, uh, a tickle for recommending these places. But I'll give you a little story. I've got off the favourite pub that we have, which I'm going to remain nameless on here so that I don't get any backlash. Gorgeous pub, amazing gastro food, great value. And for people coming from London, it's off the scale coming down here. And we do large groups and we were allowed to do large groups again from mid July. And um, I, I, I went, I just popped in with a friend for, for just a glass of beer after a long Thursday, knowing I'd have to write the Pasca newsletter the following morning. So just the one pint <laughs> went in and the landlord said, fantastic, great to see you back again. Last weekend, thank you so much for sending those guests down, 26 guests. We laid out the whole of upstairs for them. My God, those people from London, they send an absolute fortune. Oh my God, you know, we really felt we were back. Thank you so much. And I said, well, it's great to be of service. And I said, and I said, my friend, what would you like to drink? He said, I'll have a pint of beer. And I said, OK, great. I, Jeff, can I have two pints of beer? And I said, yeah, great, £10. <laughs> um, and that kind of sums up uh, a lot of the British experience with trying to do the kind of deals that Nancy describes uh, in that, you know, that I can absolutely tell you that happens all over the UK with self-caterers, with pubs and restaurants where they pile tens of thousands of pounds worth of business in, and they've never been given so much as a, as a can of Coca-Cola. So the step function has to be the digital step function that Nancy talked about. Uh, you're not gonna do much of this through mates rates and handshakes and stuff. You know, we tried it, all of us have tried it over the years, and most of the time it's an abject failure and a waste of energy. So the digital solutions I've written down from the from the anybody who's not on the chat, you know, all of those peak Fair Harbour Commission Junction, you know, certainly we will be looking at that at, at PASC, uh, Professional Association of Self Caterers. You know, we want to find ways to monetize the, the knowledge that 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 you all have and that we all have. But at the moment, um, I use that experience as a very honest version of what really happens on the ground in the UK. Did you remove that pub from your touchdown? No, library? no, because it's the best. You see, this is the point, <laughs> Andy. It's the it's great for if you're coming from London, you know, you're going to be paying 60, 70 pounds a head for a three-course meal. Here you are down in, in East Devon, and, and suddenly it's 30 pounds. And so they buy the best wine and they buy lots of it and they buy cocktails and whatever, because they're still going to pay hundred pounds a head. So that's a two thousand six hundred pound booking. And he yeah. wouldn't get that from us locals. Let's let's be let's be brutally honest about the economics here. The per person per head is slightly less spent by a local than it is from somebody in London because the income streams are completely different. And I'm sure we all uh, have that in whatever marketplace you have your your higher spending customers that come down. So you know, no, it's absolutely top of the list because it's a absolutely fabulous experience and if you ever came down here that's one of two places i'd take you to andy so it see it doesn't actually change anything that he won't do it but it the only way that it's going to happen is this digital solution that that nancy was talking about nancy can i ask you a question 
<laughs> yeah. And I, and I'm, <laughs> Sorry, you know, I had well, myself on mute. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm well aware that the kind of the businesses in the US may well be a, a you know a lot ahead of us on a lot of digital stuff. But how many how many of them are actually, you know, uh, embarking on a linking digital sign up, uh, uh, if, if if I can call it that. Sorry, of the travelers or the or yeah, the no 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 of the of the of the of the businesses you're trying to work with that there is a tickle as I called it earlier coming back. It is are, are they actually doing it? Are they going through doing the API and clicking with you and making it work? Yeah, so they don't have to do the API because it's already created within the software platform. So all I all I need to do is just basically go into my. Um, agent account and then I would just copy the details and information and I mean it depends on how you want to showcase it on your website of how you want to if you want to just embed the information or if you want to put something more custom and then have the affiliate link in there on a button which is what I have um, but I mean it's all automated so if you make it simple for the vendor it's it's all automated they don't have to worry about anything they don't have to worry about the payout to me they don't have to worry about anything I'm just driving traffic to them and producing sales for them and that's 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 what I find is the easiest and when you go into some of these platforms and I know that ResD is more I mean it started out in Australia um, so I don't know how far of a peak it's got in terms of going to Europe yet, but um, I mean, it's in North America, so I'm sure it's a good option. Um, and um, if you you go in as an agent to look for the marketplace of vendors, um, oftentimes you can find a multitude of people that you didn't even know were there or, or reach people that you think is a great experience based on what your customer avatar is asking you. Like I get asked all the time, I want to swim with the manatees. I want to swim with the manatees. We don't have anything like that really close, but two hours away, if they want to drive, I have a, I have a, an affiliate link for somebody who does it in Crystal River up North. So, I mean, you, you, the work that these platforms make it very easy. I mean, to research and to really match up and connect what the product offering could be for your guests. Okay, so two, two things. One is in the UK, I was using a really good example and an example, but if you look at an attractions uh, based model in the UK, a lot of the attractions have already got uh, online booking systems and uh, they would be offering, we would have been able to get last year, you know, three for two tickets or these kind of things. So uh, attractions are much more geared into the kind of uh, co-marketing model. It's it's kind of restaurants and, and the other kind of services. Can I ask what, what I mean, I'll tell you, I'll show you mine if you show me yours kind of thing. <laughs> we, we only have at Higher Wiscombe because we've got three cottages. We probably only have 1500 guests a year. So we're not exactly, you know, Google in terms of scale. So uh, is your scale bigger than that? No, I only have three rentals of my own as well. Um, but uh, I was going to mention if you do restaurants, Open Table has an API. So if you wanted to hire a developer, you could probably get that. I mean, you have to go through the approval process, which I have done for uh, our different business, Florida Rental by Owners. And um, then you can always do the affiliate like that way, but you do have to get approved um, through that. So Open Table is a great one for restaurants. Um, and, and but I fact, mean, in terms of in terms of my three rentals, what I was going to mention is that it's a great hook as well for more attracting more guests to you because if you start doing blog articles, let's say about the best dining experiences in Devon, yeah. uh, and, and here's the top ten pubs, restaurants, what the oldest, you know, whatever people are really searching for, and then you do that and you have your affiliate links in there. I mean, that's a hook for SEO so that you're capturing more people that are coming to your website for that. I mean, I have a couple of them like that on my own blogs. I mean, I have my 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 personal blogs are really out of date, so don't judge because they're <laughs> working on Florida rental my owners. But I mean, I, I've got like the best horseback riding experience in, you know, Anna Maria Island. And then I, I go through like a question 
like an interview style uh, article on my blog with the vendor and I discuss it and all the details and all the information with a lot of FAQs on it. And that is a huge draw for Google. So, I mean, you can all also look at it that it's not only bringing you in, you know, your affiliate link, not only giving you a great guest experience, but it's also bringing in more SEO um, content and traffic to your website too. Cool. Yeah, I think I think the one that, that Alistair asked there is the trickiest one. It is the restaurant. You know, how would Alistair be able to get the tickle uh, from that pub that he is sending guests who spend two thousand six hundred pounds as a, as a group? Yeah. So um, if they're if they're a local, you can even bypass them and just go to Open Table. And then mm. if they're on Open Table, then you can get the affiliate link mm. for that, right? Mm. So yeah, you wouldn't even have to call. Yeah. Um, Andy, there's a couple of questions that have come through. One is, it looks like a UK uh, question, and I'll try and answer it. It's the question from uh, Fiona Wilton. We are restricted from including other businesses' products in our inclusive pricing because we could then be regarded as a tour operator. I think what, uh, Fiona, you're referring to is the package travel regulations, which are dull and unnecessary and restrictive. Um, it is though only a package where you would be liable for something going wrong on the other operator if the booking was taken at the same time as they were booking your services. So let's talk about a speedboat trip as an example. So if that speedboat trip was booked at the same time they booked your accommodation um, and it accounted to more than, I, I have to check the numbers so you can email me afterwards, but it's either 20 or 25% of the total value, if it doesn't constitute more than that, it doesn't form package travel. Now, the trouble is, is when we're busy in the summer and we charge the highest prices, you know, it would be quite something to use up that 25% allowance, but in a winter wet weekend, it might be quite easy to cover the um, percentage. So we are frantically lobbying at the moment to try and get rid of the limitation on package travel regulations for businesses such as ours. So I will make a note to put a note about package travel regulations in the PASC newsletter. It's a good observation, but if they were to say um, plug for plug for touch day, so you send them the touch day link or the QR code or whatever, and they get the touch day and they scroll down it in the evening at home, you know, three, four days after they've booked with you or two weeks before they come and they book the kayaking and they book the hotel, that's a separate transaction booking directly with them and that would not come under package travel. So this is this is an opportunity uh, to, to, to think about. Wonderful. Thank you, Alistair, for picking that one up. Go for it, Tyne. So I, when Nancy first told me about all these affiliate links and stuff a few years ago, I went gangbusters trying to do this in the Branson area. And the problem is, and even though Branson is the, the live music show capital of the world, they do not have any of that stuff on any of the major booking platforms at all. I tried to sign up for all of them. Nothing in Branson was connected. So what I had to do was look at the local ticket and attraction providers as far as who are the local um, tour operators, travel agents, and did they have an affiliate link um, connected to them? And so I would go to their website and I would scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for affiliate or referral link at the very bottom. And then um, I looked at the experience of using one of them, use that experience myself to make sure it's the type of experience that I wanted my guests to go through. And then I signed up for one. And then now I put a link in my digital guidebook from Touch Day, as well as a targeted email the day after they book saying best show tickets and prices, please use our referral link. And, you know, legally in the U S you have to state it is a referral link. So I do that. Um, and then the other thing I did is I talked specifically to attractions and shows I wanted to recommend and asked for a discount code that was specific to us. So I let them know how many guests we have, how many people would be in front of them. And then they created a specific code that is directly with us. Um, and, and then in my digital guidebook, it lists says, use this code. This is what you will get. 
And on an attraction, I said, use this code, but you have to call ahead of time and make your reservation with my code or you don't get it. Um, and also we do it on a trial basis too, to make sure it's mutually beneficial. And then they decide if they want to go further with it. So, you know, you start here and then you start digging deeper and deeper. And there's always, always a way. Um, in, my, in the wine country in Missouri, it's zero. I mean, it, there's nothing. So again, I talk specifically to places that I want to recommend and we created packages together. Um, then I recommend the guest goes directly to that person because I don't have an alcohol license. I cannot sell alcohol. Therefore, I cannot sell these packages. So you know, putting their information directly there um, and taking care of that. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions, Tyan, in the, the list that we haven't answered? Um... Okay, so um, Yvette says, I live... Anyone else missing Tyan? Yeah, I missed her there. She just froze for me. Oh, there she is. Re repeat again, Tyan, because oh, okay. you went robotic and disappeared. Oh, no. Okay. So Yvette asks, I live in a very, very small town and none of the restaurants are on open table. Should I go to them and tell them to join? And is it hard for them to join? Um, Alistair, you're on mute if you were trying to talk. I think he said he doesn't know. Yeah, Ooh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just pop in. I haven't, I haven't looked at it um, from a restaurant point of view, but I would think it would be very beneficial for a restaurant just to go in and sign up for open table. I mean, cause you can get so many more customers in. So I would, if I were somebody who is starting off fresh and again, and trying to introduce a local vendor to the possibilities, um, it's just a fact of like introducing yourself, going to the manager or the owner and saying, hey, look, you know, we have a really great opportunity here. This is how many guests I get per year. It would be great if I could send some your way. And um, I'd love to work out a process to do this. Have you thought about open table and then just go into that? Um, sometimes it won't work, um, but a lot of times it does because everybody's interested in, uh, not everybody, a lot of people are interested in making their business more successful. And you know, it's, you can even think if you get a no on that, um, just try other routes, like maybe a local chef um, might be interested in doing some kind of deal with you. So it doesn't have to be automated. Maybe every time they get hired that they would give you an incentive or a part of it. It's just, um, it's just a lot of networking and a lot of um, um, basically educating yourself first and then doing the deal making afterwards. But it, it's, it's really beneficial. And Alison, I think you have not necessarily with open table, but some experience of working with local restaurants in, in Bath on behalf of the, the larger stay in Bath organization. And how have you found those conversations with, with restaurants? Uh, completely different to what I imagine Nancy's describing. I have some much more as Alistair was describing. <laughs> um, we, yeah, I, I mean, it's completely, the challenge for us is persuading the restaurant owners that they want to do what they would see as give something away for nothing. So it, it's we don't even try going to them and saying, can we have a commission? Because we know they'll just laugh at us. It, it's simply not worth it. Um, but we take a slightly different approach um, and we say for our, our catering association, we have on our touch day guide, we have something we call the Bath Reward Card, which is basically a list of local, usually independent businesses that we feel we can recommend. And we put them on the guide if they give us an offer for our guests. So it's not usually something big. They wouldn't give us anything big in any case. It might be a free glass of house wine before dinner, or if it's a cafe, it might be um, a biscuit with your coffee or... Uh, a dish of olives with your appetizers or something small along those lines. And we, if they give us that offer, we then put that on our touch stay guide, which gets distributed to all the, all the members, all the properties of which there will be around about a hundred properties. 
and those properties distribute that guide to their guests. So um, for not very much, the restaurants are getting a lot of exposure and they're getting the exposure before the guests arrive in town. So when they're actually doing their planning, people are sitting at home in their armchairs thinking about what they're going to do. Hopefully they're looking through their touch stay guide and they're thinking, well, we, and we always tell them, you know, restaurants in Bath get really busy and really booked up, particularly over the weekend. So we always say to people, please think about booking in advance. So people, so the restaurants that are participating in the guide are getting in ahead of the game, if you like, and that's quite successful. Um, but going to a restaurant and saying, I'd like a commission, please, you would be laughed and laughed at and shown the door around here. Yeah. And Just I, not worth it. Yeah. I, I mean, I suppose you make a good point in the current climate. Those restaurants maybe have a limited capacity or are opening fewer days and are likely oversubscribed. So they don't they don't need you is is the is the is the basic. But I think that, you know, you make a really good point about, you know, curating the list and trying to get the restaurant to give a little something that would entice guests to, to go there. Um, but the, the, the recommendations themselves, like Alistair was saying, is, is yeah, pretty, I don't know whether, were you going to make another point before I go off on a tangent here, Alison? I see you were about yeah, to talk. I, <laughs> I was just going to say that there's another side to this, getting the restaurants involved, you know, whereas many of them may or may not be interested in participating in order to, give something away and get more customers, they are quite keen to support local businesses. Um, and to be seen to be kind of putting something back, helping the local independent businesses is also quite appealing to lots of restaurants. And actually it's appealing to the hoteliers and, and the cell catering providers as well, because we all need a, a vibrant local economy. Um, and this is one of the ways that we can help support each other. And I think that's always been quite popular, but I think kind of it's much more talked about at the moment and better received and more, more expected. So I think there's, there's gains from both sides, really. Yeah, perfect. OK. There was one other question that came in to you, but I'm not sure we've answered yet about could you share your fine dining real med re ready meal provider? Yeah, I, I think I answered the question on online. You I did. Think. OK, but, cool. Yeah, my, my mistake. No, that's good. Um, um, Tyan. Yeah, I'm, there's a question here. Um, Nancy, maybe, and I think Nancy would be a good one. In general, as a percentage, how much do you get from having an affiliate link? So um, it depends on what the product and price is. Um, so for example, like a fishing charter for a full day in the United States is about $700. If you have a group of people about six, so you may only get like 10% or less for that. But, um, and then even sometimes if I'm talking about my grocery concierge, um, I think Allison and Alistair were touching on this before, um, for that, there's not enough margin for my concierge to give me a percentage. I still offer it hundred percent because I think it's a really valuable um, add on for all my guests. Um, but then a lot of the times when it's smaller items, like when we're talking about kayak rentals or paddleboard rentals or um, golf cart rentals, even it might only be maybe it, it'll be a higher, sorry, percentage, maybe 10 to 20 percent, a 15 to 20 percent. So it depends on the product and how much that percentage means in value. I mean, th those are decent slices of commission. Like it adds up. It really adds up like a little bit here, a little bit there, mm. bike rentals. I mean, a lot of people rent bikes on my island. I don't carry them because I am a remote host. I live in Canada and I don't have the ability, nor do I want to, of a handyman that's constantly managing bikes and the upkeep of bikes. So having this option is a, a fantastic um, thing. And even I was just thinking, you know, you can even nowadays there's a platform and I forget the name of it where you can even rent cars. So if you buy a car, leave it down in your property, they provide this software platform. I think it's Truro, I wanna say, but not positive. So don't quote me on it. Um, they provide the insurance. Somebody had talked about insurance before. The insurance coverage 
for people who are um, renting it from you for the week that they're there and then you get a cut for, I mean you get the full uh, rental rate and then they that software platform takes a percentage of it so that's another opportunity I mean we as hosts had looked at uh, we bought a boat we were very excited uh, we got a boat for our level it's the kind of boat and especially being on the ocean you don't want to have somebody taking it out on their own maybe for a lake front property you would um, we wanted a captain um, so we were looking into that there are platforms that do that as well like boat setter so we just haven't gotten into it because COVID hit and you know we didn't want people in close proximity um, but it's something that we're also exploring so I mean it's just the options of an upsell are just only limited by your imagination really because there's so many opportunities out there Mm. Uber. So I'm gonna bring it. Do Uber, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a link to Uber and Lyft, um, Walmart grocery order. I mean, I think the point is is figuring out what it is your guests are asking over and over. What they again? What do they need? And for instance, our grocery delivery service, I charge the guests sixty dollars. My cost is twenty to twenty five dollars. So that is a huge markup. And that's also because if I can't get my errand runner to do it and myself or my husband is there and we have to do it, I want it worth my time. And we don't do anything but go to the store and be the pickup person. The guest has to order it online. They pay for it online. We don't do any actual grocery shopping. We go pick it up and then we go bring it back to the house and put it in place so it's there on arrival. Um, guests will pay for the service. It's for the convenience and no one wants to spend two hours first thing in vacation land when they get to a place. Um, so you're, you're giving the better experience and you're solving a problem. And the reason we make it optional is because some people like it, you know, this is a service that we want to do for the people who want it. This is a really good conversation. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, uh I would okay, Andy, yes. I have a, a question to come in uh, about um, uh, uh, business giving up a grocery concierge because supermarket deliveries can do it better and they sadly won't pay us for the referral. Um, uh, Pask any chance of a group deal uh, in that market. I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to really get a deal from Ocado or Waitrose or Tesco. Um, they're, they're, if they started doing that for everybody that recommended them, the margins on I understand that the margins on supermarket deliveries are so low they actually lose money, uh, which is a baffling concept to me why you would hmm. do it. But um, over to them. Um, but I don't think that there aren't deals that we can't we can't do. I mean, we're, if you look at um, the past buying group, you, you get a discount of five percent on Screwfix, and any one of us is spending a lot of money at Screwfix every year. So that that these are savings rather than upsells. Uh, there's lots of ways where we can get collective savings and we will work, you know, tooth and nail to try and get those. Um, so that's perhaps, a, a, you know, a, a, a conversation or a, a member's conversation for another day about what, what kind of deals we could look for that would be realistic. Upselling is, is trying to make some, some, uh, some more margin from something you're probably already doing. Um, and, you know, I do think that all of the angles that have been discussed today, I'm, I'm certainly going to try and find out how hard it is to link the audiences that we have with the likes of uh, the um, platforms that have been raised in the chat um, and, and go and see how that might work. I mean, we all have an audience. So, you know, individually, I have an audience of 1500. Uh, within a Premier Cottages context, we probably have an audience of a quarter of a million. Within a pass context, 50,000 cottages, I wouldn't like to think how many hundreds of thousands of the audiences. And suddenly you're starting to be able to leverage uh, a deal perhaps uh, with some of these people. Um, you know, I need to understand how that's all gonna work. I need to understand how that's gonna, you know, pay dividends to people. You know, it, it's all very well, you know, e each business wants to make its own different recommendations of own restaurants. It's no good just getting a, an affiliate deal with Just Eat, which is a big one in the UK. And, and your high quality cottages can get kebabs and, and chicken drumsticks delivered to them because they're not, those, that customer profile is not going to order and you're not gonna get a tickle. So, you know, it's, it's right audience, right opportunity, right deal. 
that's always quite a complicated mix. You know, where small companies trying to do business with big companies in some cases, that's not necessarily a very good mix. So perhaps working with some of the groups I've just talked to, talked about might level up the conversation. Um, and we will certainly, you know, be, be pursuing that. Andy and I talk about this kind of thing you know, all the time, and, and you know, this would be a great way to, to, to move it forward. And I, and I think what's powerful about that is where Touchday has 15,000 properties, we're scattered all over the world. Where Pask has 50,000 members, they're in no, the no, UK. No, 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 I don't want to inflate anything. 50,000 properties. 50,000 properties under... It's a big uh, number uh, yeah. in, in, in the UK, yeah. you know. So that, that's where it becomes more interesting when you have a scale in a market. Um, okay, very good. And Alistair, I do want to encourage you to talk to those grocery stores. And the reason I'm saying that is because I was just at the Florida Verma event and Publix, the major grocery chain in Florida, was there as a major sponsor because they understood how important grocery delivery service was to the property managers. And they wanted to get their message across that, hey, we will work with you um, with this grocery delivery service. So looking at what Publix is doing in the state of Florida, you might want to then take a cue and talk to um, your grocery people as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, well, I, I, we, we tried, I mean, everything's changed with the pandemic, you know, uh, conversations that you couldn't have with people through the pandemic, you can have now. So I absolutely accept that time and you're 100% you're right. Pre-pandemic, we tried to have a conversation with John Lewis, which is, which is um, uh, I'm trying to think of an equivalent store in the US, there is one, it's the sort of high-end department store, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, and said to them, look, you know, we've got all these members who have to buy, on average, you know, a fridge a year, a dishwasher a year, a cooker a year, because they're constantly having to churn the stuff. And, you know, what we would like to do is, is in the first instance, see if there's some kind of deal that there would be a, a, a discount, effectively. Uh, but over time, whether we could be working with you to work with your suppliers like Bosch, Siemens, whatever, to stop making these ridiculously complicated machines that none of our guests can operate. And we spend the whole of our lives going and trying to reset. On a dishwasher, you want one cycle on off. You don't want every conceivable variance of everything. And they were like so disinterested that I couldn't, in the end, I had to force a response, which was, we, we just don't have a department for this kind of thing. Now, as, you know, shop, uh, online competition, margins, you know, pressure, people looking at business models, trying to, you know, look to the future, I think that conversation is worth revisiting. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be successful, but at some point in time, someone's going to realise that if you took all the... Um, holiday cottages in the UK, you know, doing a deal with them would give you an advantage over everybody else in providing simple dishwashers and you'd get all the business. Someone's going to click on that one day. And then mm. we need to be getting a piece of that for creating that market and that um, that route to market. Actually, it's not the market, it's the route to market. Yeah, you're the retailer. So yeah, so we become, we become a, a distributor, but mm. only through a link which is what Nancy was saying, you know, you're the link, you don't actually hold the stock or anything else. And, you know, this is, it's all going to change. You know, these guys, they, they you know, manufacturing will, 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 will have to be much smarter. Um, you know, the products, and this is very boring for you in America, Nancy, but products in Europe are going to have to be last longer. And if they don't, they're going to have to pay to get them fixed and provide spare parts. So actually, that's an argument that's moving towards this, that we could provide less high functioning equipment. It's not to hack the guests off, but they don't want a washing machine with 76 different cycles because they can't figure it out. They just can't. Mm. They want a medium hot wash, a hot, I, I don't do the washing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> three, three different washes is sufficient on a washing yeah. machine. Yeah. Two different cycles is sufficient on a dishwasher. You know, it's, and a fridge that stays at five degrees is sufficient. And then we'd all have less problems and the guests would have a better experience. So all these things tie into this upsell, uh, deals, tickles. It's all the same conversation cut a thousand different ways. So yeah, there's lots of opportunities to, to find ways that you can save money as owners and lots of money, ways that we can try and find ways to help you make more money as owners, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, it, it's interesting that the, the, the kind of things that we can do are as fragmented as our industry is. I think the fragmented nature of this makes collecting and pooling resources the challenge in a way that the Hilton Group does not have that same problem. So that's something to, to mow on. Um, did we miss any questions, Tyanne, as we're coming towards the end? I don't see one. Um, there, there are two. Someone wanted to see an example of Touch Day with upsells embedded. And um, that's something I think we can share in the show notes. Um, and then Graham asked, do any of the panelists have experience hosting an online souvenir shop or similar? Um, Alistair saying no. Al Allison, no. Nancy? Nancy does. I said, I thought you did. And then I do as well. So, so I was just talking with this um, founder of this uh, other like provider. His is BN Sell It. I'm not trying to sell his stuff. But anyway, he's he's come to the market for, but he realizes there's a huge opportunity with vacation rentals. And he's come with these packages that you can um, purchase and have them in inventory in your home with some kind of app that you um, could include in your touch day guide. And then, uh, I mean, in terms of a link to get to it. And um, all you need to do is like um, press the code and then scan whatever item you want to take as a, as a guest, and then it clears it from the inventory. And then um, it, you know, it does another supply again. What's really cool about it, it's, it's almost replacing the whole idea of the hotel um, food package, but it's not necessarily food package. It's like, you can order like a couple's package if that's your jam with your avatar, <laughs> and like, or birthday packages, or it's very interesting what they put into these kits and you can have it physically in your um, rental and then also sell that way, which is, is very cool. I mean, there's so many, we have to do a webinar just about strategy on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much strategy to it too. We're not like, you know, the whole lead up and the, the perfect product at the right time, introducing it to the, to the guests that's coming in to make sure that you're going to benefit um, um, to, to upsell. So yeah, strategy, we need to think about that next. <laughs> I, I, I've seen you're on their website under Florida Rental By Owners. Um, does that mean that, that you can introduce us to said person? Because I think that might be interesting to Yeah, to talk. absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah for sure. Right. Good, good. Thank you. Uh, we are coming to the end. So I know we've had a lot of questions, but if anyone has a burning question that wasn't answered, please let us know. Um, Oh, two of us have asked for a repeat of Nancy's affiliate providers. I tell you what we'll do. Should we do that on the email to you all afterwards? Let's do that. So maybe Nancy will pick your brain on who they are. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've been kind of plotting them in all the way through. So yeah, maybe if we condense them, yeah. that'd be awesome. I yeah. think that, think that would be helpful. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> don't we need insurance for this? I think we touched on the insurance point. Um, Norma, Norma, are you from the UK or the US or somewhere else? Not to be whilst we're waiting for that. Uh, UK, so I think- I, I just want to comment on that. I can, no I, I, I can say uh, on, on insurance, third party providers at your premises is um, something you need to think about. So if they're coming onto your premises and if you go onto the past UK website, you go onto reports, there's a paper exactly on the um, pros and cons of having third party providers on your premises if if they're not on your premises and you're not falling foul of the package travel directive then you know the, the, the insurance is slightly different but i'm going to sound really boring if you're recommending people it's probably best to make sure they're proper legit businesses because boy oh boy when it backfires does it backfire so you choose the paddle boarding company that's bothered to take public liability insurance rather than the one that nick the van and stole the boards um it'll it'll turn out better yeah yeah wise advice okay good i think we have reached the end of questions i'm sure if we kept it open we would continue to get a stream of them so thank you everyone for listening and thank you for all your valuable questions uh, we will recap some of the, the more important bits uh, in the follow-up email with a link to this video as well. So check your emails in the next few days. I'll probably guess by the end of the week. Um, good. Anything else, Alison, Nancy, Alistair, that you want to say in, in parting? Nope. Shaking of heads. I think you've spoken a lot. 
very, very useful stuff. Thank you. Uh, really interesting discussion. Uh, so much more interactive and interesting than some of the past ones have been. So um, big thumbs up for that. Much appreciated. And Atayan, anything else in closing? Yeah, um, we have a poll going on just to kind of get your guys's um, view on what is the most difficult part on doing upsells or how we also talked about value add and things like that. And definitely look for the email afterwards. I will share a link to my digital guidebook that has my affiliate links as well as how I do shop for souvenirs. Um, I do it really simple, um, super simple, driving everyone back to my website, of course, uh, and bringing that SEO there. And then also next week, we will have this conversation again, except it will be Australian UK. So it could very well be a different conversation. And I, I don't know. Um, I will be asleep at that point. Um, Hazel, <laughs> Hazel will be joining Andy next week instead. Um, and I'm really interested myself in that as well. Just getting the different viewpoints from a different different places around the world and how people um, give their guests the best experience. Terrific. And I can confirm it will be very different. Um, so thank you all. Have a good rest of your week and see you soon.